Hey folks, how are y'all doing today? Okay. Thank, you for, how are you? thank you for being with us. We've asked you together today so that we could discuss with you an arrest that we made last evening. We made this arrest with a partnership from the FBI. I'm going to start and very cautiously go through and give you the information and then I'll an answer any questions. The FBI received information about 10 o'clock yesterday morning outside of the state of Florida that someone was engaged in some horrific communications concerning the sexual abuse of very young children, as young as two years of age. They sent that information to Central Florida, to the FBI agents out of Orlando, who in turn contacted our Bureau of Special Investigations, and we began investigating with them. We went to a residence in Lakeland where we found our suspect, who turned out to be Joshua Smith, a police officer for nine years with the Oakland Police Department, which is a small community outside of Orlando, Florida. When we arrived there, what we found was absolutely startling. We had photographs of a very young child. When our detectives and FBI agents went into the residence, we found that very young child wearing the exact same clothes that was in the photographs. Our investigation occurred. Joshua Smith refused to answer any more questions. Our detectives and the FBI agents consulted with the prosecutors. Brad Copley is our special prosecutor for the state attorney's office here, and it was determined that it was in the best interest of justice that we arrest Joshua Smith, and that's what our deputies did last evening. So from the time the FBI first determined this event was a real threat to a small child to the time the investigation occurred as a cooperative investigation Joshua Smith was in jail by 6 p.m. last night. He communicated, Joshua Smith, the police officer, communicated, and he called himself James King. He said, I'm the no limit perv dad. He, he talked about having access to a child, will not relate the relationship of the child other than to say it's a two-year-old child that he had access to and that child we found at the residence whenever we went there. The suspect sent, as I said, three images and we clearly identified the child as well as we were able to identify drapes, the and the furniture inside the residence. The suspect, this police officer, James Smith, sent these images to prove that he had access to a live child. The conduct, the communication, the written communication is so horrific, so graphic, so outrageous that the normal person would never, ever, ever be able to comprehend what was said. And we'll obviously not talk about that here. We served a search warrant on his computer. We just started that process just minutes ago. So all through the morning, we worked with Brad Copley, our assistant state attorney. And you all have heard me brag on him in the past. He is simply the very best. <coughs> We obtained a search warrant signed by the judge, and we started our search of his electronic devices. We've already found another image, a child porn image. He's not been charged with that yet, 
but he will at the conclusion of our investigation, I can assure you. We also found, and, I'm, and let me stop here a second before I give you this terminology that I'm about to get, give you, because what I'm going to tell you is what we found on his cell phone. I'm not making an inference to his relationship to our victim. Officially and clearly, all we're saying is the victim is someone he had access to. But here's the topics he was looking at online. Dirty girl, born to be used, daddy's daughter, daddy's little girl, incest. This person has demonstrated conduct and written communication that is absolutely gut-wrenching and absolutely horrible. He's currently in the county jail under a $150,000 bond. We are actively investigating him at this time, and I can assure you of one thing. Anyone, anyone who tries to lure a child, who engages in child pornography, will absolutely be arrested and prosecuted. But you can believe this. If it's a law enforcement officer or a person in a position of trust, we will investigate them first. They go to the top of the stack. The conduct by this guy is appalling and it outrages all law, the law enforcement officers that have worked on this case and certainly will outrage all law enforcement officers across this state and nation. Our pursuit here is justice. I can tell you unequivocally, we're going to do everything in our power. The state attorney with the prosecutorial strength of our statutes will do everything to make sure he's never a police officer again. And in addition to that, we want him in state prison for just as long as we can keep him there. And that's what we're working toward as we serve the search warrant and continue to build the case. I must once again brag on the FBI and our partnership and our investigation. This was recognized as a police emergency. And we were able to rescue a child and put a very bad person in jail yesterday. Any questions? Sheriff, um, you said on the onset that you got a call about children. How many children do you suspect or possibly could be a part of this? At this point in the investigation, we see one child. But we know that where there's one child, certainly there can be more children. And we also know that the the other pornographic image, child porn image that we have is of a different child. And that's under investigation. It appears that that child porn image is one that has already been on the internet. It does not appear to be a child that he has direct access to. But keep in mind, we are minutes into this investigation. While we were prepping to speak with you today, we were continuing to get information from our detectives to the supervisors in my office. Yes, ma'am. You've dealt with some pretty despicable, raunchy, awful cases in your career. How would you describe this one, and where would you think it? Our detectives have had the privilege of putting a lot of very sick, perverted, demented people in jail. Based upon his conduct and his communication, he is the worst of the worst. He has the potential to be the worst of the worst. The investigation's not over. If he's following up on the conduct that he related, he is among the worst of the worst. Sheriff, reading this document here, it's, it, it's hard for a lot of us here to stomach. At first glance, it's awful. What went through your mind when you found out it was a law enforcement officer on top of it? 
that's what makes it outrageous, the most outrageous. I should say the most outrageous. It's outrageous under any circumstance. But our law enforcement officers, the same one that will write a ticket for you today will stand in front of a bullet for you tonight. They put their life on the line to keep you safe every day. We run in to save children. And to think a man that has the public trust from the people of Oakland, Florida, would do this is despicable. But I can assure you of this. He'll never be in a patrol car in Oakland, Florida, or any place else. He'll only be in a jail cell in the state prison if our prosecution is as successful as we anticipate it will be. I was asked the question, what other charges am I expecting? Just every one we can find a charging with. As, as the investigation goes on, we won't overlook the smallest charge. And certainly, we will do our absolute best to charge him with everything that the law allows. Sheriff, my newsroom is actually texting me right now, and they find it hard to believe that this guy's being held on a $150,000 bond. It seems very low, considering what he's accused of doing. That's a second-degree felony. I think the normal second-degree felony bond is about 15000 The $150,000 bond only occurred because Mr. Copley went to court today and petitioned the judge for 150000 But that does not include any other child porn images we find, or certainly we hope that's not the case, but if there's other victims that he may have had access to, we desperately need to talk to you because we want to make sure that he never gets out of jail and prison. And so if you know someone who's a victim or someone's child who's a victim or some information that will help us, that you've been afraid to say anything because he's a law enforcement officer, relax. Relax. He's never going to be a law enforcement officer that carries a gun and a badge as long as we have anything to do with it. Sheriff, he calls himself a no-limit per dad. Is there any validity to him actually being a father? Do you know, I don't know where and if or how many children he may or may not have, and I'm, I'd rather not even go down that path right now. But I can tell you this, that he said some of the most horrific things, and you have the redacted copy. Sheriff, in the report, it talks about six months ago with this three-year-old child. How long do we suspect this has been going on? I know you're not ready to say the relationship, but obviously, was he some sort of caretaker in some way? He was in a position of, of having access to this child. But I can assure you this, we re the FBI received this communication at 10, about 1016 yesterday morning. They partnered with us. We did a cursory investigation and had him in jail by 6 last night. And we don't know how long he may have been doing this at this point and stage in the investigation, but I can assure you that we'll be kicking over every stone and checking every piece of information that we can so we can determine what or how long or who he may have had contact with. Listen, at, at this age in life, you don't wake up on a bright, beautiful Florida morning and say, gosh, I think I'll do something really nasty today. The, we can tell by his communication. He's at least had this communication before. We know that he's exchanged child pornography because we see one image before we even get into the forensics other than looking through what's easily available on a cell phone and we still have hard drives and thumb drives and other devices to go through. So we don't know what we'll find. We are literally talking to you within hours of this event, but I can promise you this. This will be one investigation that we go through with a fine tooth comb and charge everything that we can charge because we're angry. Clearly, we're angry that anyone would do this. We're more angry because it's a police officer. Just want to clarify, we're hearing a couple different ages. So the little girl, what was her age? And then two, 
was he, did it seem like he was attempting to get somebody to come join in with him? The <laughs> age of the child he had access to is approximately two years old. And he was, he thought, talking to somebody of like mind that had a similar interest that would exchange pictures and text with him. And who knows what it would have led to. It's not unusual. In fact, it's frequent that they will travel back and forth. So if he could have worked up a set of circumstances where traveling would have occurred in this conduct, that is part of what occurs. We don't see that here yet. Was the person he was communicating with, he was a member of law enforcement, correct? Yes. And he said social media. Is it Twitter or Facebook or some other website that people just don't know about? We're not going to release anything other than social media because of the ongoing investigation and because we want people to know you're not safe any place on social media if you are targeting children. We will chase you around the globe. We will chase you around the globe on the internet. We'll chase you around the globe and arrest you. In fact, we currently have someone fighting extradition we have locked up in Australia right now. So don't think you'll ever get away from us because we'll chase you to the ends of the earth and we'll catch you. I don't think he expected us, but then they, none of them expect us, but we smile and we say hi, we're from the sheriff's office to help, and that's what we did. The FBI and my sheriff's detectives saved a child that this person, this ugly, nasty person had access to yesterday. You know, we're not, we're not releasing the details of what's in the photos at this time, but, but I, I can tell you that when you think of law enforcement officers who go to work every day to protect and to serve, I can tell you some FBI agents and sheriff's detectives that saved a baby's life yesterday. Sheriff, how is the child? The child is in remarkably good care and is in the care of its mother. The mother at this point in the investigation clearly had absolutely no idea that this was occurring. However, that investigation will continue, but at this point in the investigation, we have absolutely no reason to believe that the mother had anything at all to do with it. When it was brought to her attention, she was not only mortified, she was an immediate emotional wreck. That's part of our investigation. We, we are obviously provi providing physical examinations to the victim, and that's why it's so important that we know if there are any other children out here. Sheriff, in the report, and I don't want to draw any kind of comparisons here, but it talks about how the wife has no clue. You just said the mother had no clue. Are these one and the same, and your out-of-state contact what, what I'm suggesting to you is I'm not going to talk about the relationship of the child other than to say the man had access to this child. But I can tell you the mother of the child had absolutely no idea that this was happening as far as the investigation is right now. And quite frankly, ethically, I think it would be best for us all to leave any relationships or assumptions or information we received out of the, the report to protect the mother of the child and the child. Did anybody else live in the home where this took place? I don't know, but if even if I did, I wouldn't release that information right now. No, he, he, to what he, did? No, he, he would not talk to us. Because of the nature of his crimes, is he under any special protection in your jail? He will be housed in a single person cell. Obviously, you can't put him in population for two reasons. 
even criminals in jail have some ethics and morals when it comes to abusing children. So we have to protect child predators from other inmates in the jail. And then, of course, because he's a law enforcement officer, we will keep him safe and by himself. Oftentimes, Sheriff, something like this, when they're in jail, they wear that. Is he under any kind of suicide watch? If that becomes necessary, he absolutely would be. We, at this point, haven't seen that indication. However, we do intense checks on everyone, and if we see any conduct such as that, we will take immediate action to protect him against his cell. Sheriff, you said he obviously wasn't saying much because he wanted an attorney there and, and wants to go through that. Does he show any kind of remorse or anything? He was, he was very stoic, and he just didn't want to talk to us. But we're showing the emotion. We're mad. We're mad that he's a law enforcement officer and would do that. We're mad that it happened anyway, but we're angry that someone who is trusted by a community to protect and serve would abuse a child. But he won't have access to a child as long as we have anything to do with it. Quick question about the other law enforcement agency that was involved with the other end. Was it a local agency or was that federal? Was that the FBI? We're, we are working with the FBI on this case. And once again, I can't emphasize how great and how quick the response was by the FBI and certainly our detectives when they discovered this information. They contacted our detectives who also work as part of the ICAT team, Internet Crimes Against Children and we immediately responded to the residents. So it was an incredible partnership and working relationship. Was there another police department that was doing some sort of covert operation online looking for bad people, or how did they just stumble upon this guy? Well, if it was... <laughs> We, we receive tips, for, tips from Nick Mick every day. And that comes from people throughout the country to the, different, to the different organizations. So we receive tips every day about people involved in child pornography, abusing children physically and emotionally and sexually, and we follow up on those. I can tell you that the Oakland Police Department supervision has been overtly helpful, totally cooperative, and I'm absolutely sure that they will be and are as mortified as the rest of us are. So the Oakland Police Department has been nothing other than totally cooperative. Thank you. Okay. Sheriff, these crimes are happening every day. Anything you want to conclude with just these folks that are out there doing that that haven't been caught yet? Well. You know, every time we have one of these operations, I tell folks, we are looking for you. Law enforcement all across this country is looking for you. And in fact, more and more agencies are getting into the Internet world of searching out child predators. So it's no secret that we do undercover operations. We've done them in the past. We'll do them in the future. We follow up tips. And my message is always the same. If we didn't get you last time, We'll get you next time. You know good and well my detectives are the best in the business, and we're coming after you. Get ready. Pack your bag, and if you want a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, go ahead and eat it because I don't serve them in the county jail. But you will be going to jail if you are engaged in child pornography or certainly if you want to child, we're after you. Okay. Thank you very much. No, the, you haven't heard that one? Oh, good night. I cut PB and J out a long time ago. We don't no peanut butter and jelly. No. T